darlings welcome to a new vlog it's friday morning which means my day started with cardio <laughs> reformer pilates which is quite um exacerbating <laughs> exhausting it's quite an intense form of pilates so i had a nice shower here at um bamford i've done a very substantial shop full of veggies and dog food <laughs> and various bits for the weekend Charlie and I are cooking a mega toad in the hole, or well, some people call it a sausage in the hole, for dinner tonight for us and my mum and my mum's friend. She's got a friend that she met on holiday, a lady friend, and she's staying with my mum for a little while, so we've invited them both over for toad in the hole, and we're gonna do some really yummy, hearty sides to go with that. So yeah. We're gonna be preparing that later together and I'm gonna make some cute little desserts to have with it. I must have been complimented on this jumper five or six times during my little trot around Dalesford. It is probably the coziest jumper of all time. I will leave it linked down below. It's from a brand called Citizens of Humanity and it's just the perfect mega cozy cable knit. Now, I'm not in a mad rush to get home today, so I think I'm going to tootle over to Stow on the Wold um, and just have a little look in the antique shops there because I've not been antiquing in a very long time and also nip into the deli there. The deli in Stow is really lovely. I must not go to the fish and chip shop <laughs> because it's, it's the best one in the Cotswolds and I haven't had fish and chips in a while but I've got veggie broth in the fridge so I'm going to try and restrain myself and maybe have a nice kind of veggie broth when I get home which would be really lovely. Still that same broth that I made two vlogs ago. It is mm, so good and I'm definitely going to be making it a lot in the future. You can just shove everything into it. Like the other day I did the noodles. Oh I need to buy some more of them actually. It was amazing. The journey on the way here, oh my gosh, I don't know if I've shown it before these clips, but it was raining so much last night, so heavily, and um, all of the mud and the water is coming off the fields into the road, and it's just like brown rivers. <laughs> I had to drive through probably four foot of water. I actually sent a photo to Charlie, and I was like, can I drive through this? But my car is a 4x4, four four. obviously Charlie's car would be absolutely fine. Can you see? Cray cray. Yeah, Charlie's car, the Defender, would be absolutely fine. You can literally drive through lakes in them. Um, this one I'm not too sure. Anyway, I've actually been sat in the car doing emails and chatting to you and voice noting friends for so long that I now need a wee. <laughs> Sorry, TMI. So I'm going to dash back into Dalesford, <laughs> go for a wee. <laughs> Sorry. And then we'll head over to Stowe. So this cute little street is what you have to drive down to get to the main square in Stowe. There are so many little antique shops and not so little ones ranging hugely from slightly smarter pieces like brassware and lovely mahogany furniture um, to some slightly more kind of shabby chic ones with plant pots and things like that. I like to explore all of them because you never know what you're going to find. This is definitely the place to come if you need a dining chair. <laughs> Spoons. 
Now this would be rather fabulous for serving your mulled wine at Christmas. <laughs> Looks like the Goblet of Fire. <laughs> Got to say, this is so lovely. Most antique places just stick a price on, but this has a lovely label with all the information about the item, the year that it's from, 1717 to 1800, the price, a little bit of information, Georgian campaign mahogany butler's tray on stand. That was definitely more of one of the more expensive antique places, but they've also got some lovely little boutiques, lots of independent stores like this one down on Church Street. And there's also lots of boutiques selling your favourite country attire. The Chameaux, Barbers, Beaufort and Blake. And across the square, right next door to each other, you've got a lovely traditional old sweet shop with all the sweets in the jars. And then the most amazing fudge, which I'm going to have to pick some up for Lala. Honestly, this is just the cutest little town. So just across from the organic shop, which obviously you can get some really nice fruit and veg and bits, is Tara Antiques. This one is really higgledy-piggledy, lots of different floors to explore, and um, lots of slightly more affordable trinkets. I often end with armfuls from here. ended up leaving with my copper strainers which I think will be very handy and very cute. This is such a lovely little shop to get your um, veggies and then cut up Brooks next door. Lots of lovely little knickknacks in there. Now down this little street there are a few little gems. Oops! <laughs> and I'm gonna pop into D'Ambrosi Fine Foods. You can actually ask them to cater for your events. Um, they'll do everything but a little bit like Quince and Clover you can get some nice salad boxes and some lovely seasonal pieces. The world's most ferocious guard dog. You are. Yes, you are. <laughs> a few fabulous fashion stores. You've also got a Fairfax and Favour and Aspiga down here. So I've got my oat milk latte and I've got a cookie in the bag from the lovely 42nd Street, 42nd East Bakehouse. The lady in there was so lovely, she actually watched the videos, so hello if you're watching, <laughs> nice to meet you. And now I'm going to pop into the Cotswold Cheese Company and no prizes for guessing <laughs> what they sell here. fluffy hair. It just expands if I don't do anything with it um, and I think I'm just gonna leave it oh natural today. So let's do a little a little haul of um, bits and bobs from Stowe and Dalesford. I won't bore you with my entire veg order. Obviously these are not local but you can get other bits at Dalesford as well. So a few bananas. I got some nice eggs for breakfasts and for baking lovely yogurts and I am actually gonna be doing my own yogurt today I've decided I've been talking about it for long enough but yeah definitely gonna try making my own yogurt uh, a load of leeks I think Charlie's gonna do a really nice 
like creamy leek and pea side to have with our toad in the hole later, which quite frankly, ooh, sounds amazing. What's in here? Onions. This was 30% off. It is a beetroot and horseradish hummus. So I'm gonna make some seed crackers and we can have this as a little nibble before dinner this evening. Another yogurt. A giant olive oil. Uh, we normally use honest toil, but we'd run out. So that is like a desperate cry for olive oil. Semi-skimmed milk and the most ridiculously bougie dog food in the world. This is their favorite beef and vegetable organic Dalesford dog food, my spoiled little children. And then we've got a load of really nice butter. <laughs> there is literally one ingredient in the Dalesford butter and that is milk. That's what we like to see. I've just been listening to the Diary of a CEO, um, Stephen Bartlett with Tim Spector podcast. It's a very long one, but it's a very interesting one. They were talking about health halos and how food that ever has to tell you that it's healthy, like 0% fat, high in fiber, high in vitamin D, natural sugar, no, natural um, sweeteners, natural, made with real fruit. That is nearly always <laughs> not the best sign. In fact, it's a bad sign because it means that it's probably been ultra processed in order to replace the mouthfeel of those things. So yeah, the less ingredients, the better. I did get a little bag of fudge. I didn't go too wild. Just a little bag of fudge from that Morton oh, fudge store. Yum. And then you might be able to see down here in the corner, I got some little twisted branches of hazel. Um, this is actually, I'm thinking for in our bedroom because we don't typically have flowers in our bedroom unless I've got loads of them coming from the garden. But I thought if I get some hazel and some lovely hydrangeas, then they'll dry out really beautifully and then we'll have blooms in our bedroom all throughout autumn. The trick with these is actually to let them dry out in water. So every couple of days you just snip the bottom of them, make sure there's enough water and that should really help them to retain their color. The bottom ones are called the antique hydrangea with a little bit of purple on the edge and I think they are so beautiful. So I'm just gonna pop them in the sink. And then what else did I get from Stowe? I got some Gruyere cheese and some, sorry, <laughs> Gruyere and Red Leicester, both of which are amazing in pumpkin-y dishes. I can't decide whether to do my veggie broth soup for lunch or a pumpkin pasta. Mm. Leaning towards the pasta, especially seeing as I've got pumpkin puree in the fridge, which needs eating up, whereas the broth will last. What's this? Oh, this is my cookie from 42nd East Bakehouse. It's a giant chocolate chip cookie. Seeing as we've all come to the conclusion that I cannot make cookies, I do need to try it again though. And then from the antique shop, from Tara's Antiques, I don't know why I've got a Charlotte Tilbury pillow cheat lip liner in here. Pillow cheat? <laughs> lip, lip cheat pillow talk. These are little strainers, and now that I'm looking in the viewfinder, <laughs> we've literally got a big version, but I think these will be really handy. I'm sure Charlie will tell me off for buying clutter for the kitchen, but it's cute and I love them. So there we go. Right, um, I am going to put all this away mm. and then make myself some lunch. Ooh, you're a little bit low now. Um, okay, so I've decided I am gonna have the noodle soup because I'm actually not hungry enough for the pumpkin pasta. And I don't know why I'm not that hungry because actually all I've had today is a coffee and a matcha, which is not great. Anyway, so I'm gonna do my veggie stock noodle soup and I've shown you the finished result before but I've never actually shown you how I do it before. A Couple of vlogs ago, we made this together, which is my roasted veggie stock. I actually bought, which by the way is so easy, if you didn't watch that vlog, I basically got loads of veggies, Roasted them in the Arga slash oven for about 45 minutes, chopped up, um, including onions, garlic, uh, tomatoes, carrots, parsnips, leeks, celery, you name it. Roasted for a while and then cooked in a big cast iron pan with some water for about two hours to really get the goodness out. And then straining it and you wanna keep the liquid. It's just so good for you. A nice veggie broth, great for keeping away any little illnesses. 
And you can literally consume that as a soup because it's so good. But what you can also do, and I did this for my B rate, my camera has got like an exclamation mark on it as so, though as though something is wrong. I don't know, I don't know what's wrong. Um yeah, so in here, this is gonna be the second well, that's rude. It just randomly stopped filming. Anyway, this is my little Stasha freezer bag, um, which I... <laughs> Sorry, I just don't like having this big expanse of darkness behind me. I find it a little bit scary. Yeah, this is a bag that I keep in the freezer and I just put veggie scraps. So you can see that I was making something with pumpkin the other day. We've got pumpkin scraps. Um, this this carrot is a little bit floppy and I don't fancy eating it as a regular carrot So that's gonna go in there. Um, I probably won't eat all the stalks of the broccoli today So they will go in here as well when this bag gets full I will tip it into a Sturdy saucepan and by the way, you can get these kind of saucepans very easily at antique shops Ours are from Falk I think or Staub. I think Falk they were not cheap. They were Charlie's 30th birthday present from, no, they are Dubaia, Dubaia. Yeah, I got them for Charlie for his 30th birthday. Anyway, once this is full, add it to a heavy base saucepan. Dexter, just wait a second. Cover it with water and then simmer for a couple of hours and then you'll get a really nice veggie broth. That one, oh, he shut that door. It's a puppy dog, it's not Dexie, it's his Dexie. It's my biggest child, it's my eldest. Gosh, I watch other people doing cooking segments and they just whiz through so quickly and I just want to chat about every single detail. But the moral of the story is um, this broth is better because it's really nice roasted proper veggies. This is my B-rate broth. It is practically free to make and if I'm putting broth or stock into another recipe, for example, into a pumpkin soup or into a parsnip and apple soup or into a gravy, then this would be the one that I'll use. So B-rate stock, A-rate stock. You could just make this one and you'd be absolutely fine. It'd be fine for this recipe, but this one is tastier. So, my soup recipe. First of all, I'm gonna use half of this. I could water it down with some, you guessed it, water. Perfect, that's enough for another day. There's some like gunk floating on the top of this, which I don't like the look of, so I'm just gonna spoon that into the bin. Right, let's get this on the hob. Okay, the stock is on the hob. Now I've got a couple of little veggies here, a few broccoli florets and a carrot. So as I mentioned, I'm probably not gonna stick in the stalks. You absolutely could do. I just know that I will probably not end up eating them. So I'm gonna put them in my freezer bag and then they won't go to waste. They'll be used for my stock next time. The other florets, I'm just gonna cut a little bit smaller and then throw them into the soup. And I'm also slicing up a carrot. You can literally add whatever is in your fridge. I'm also going to add in some frozen peas. And frozen peas are great because they're frozen so quickly after being picked that actually um, they retain a lot of their freshness. I'm not gonna defrost them or anything, I'm just gonna tip a load into the soup. So yeah, I'm just gonna water it down the tiniest little bit. Veggies going in. I'm also adding in some quinoa. This is just a mixed jar that we've got um, for a little bit of extra, extra goodness. And then I've got these ramen noodles, but I prefer to cook these separately and then add the cooked noodles into the broth. Using my new strainer. <coughs> So now we've got the noodles in the veg broth and I'm just gonna let this heat up a little bit more and then we're ready to serve. Well, that was delicious and I'm now making up my turmeric latte. This Amazon um, whisk is very useful for just making sure the spices are blended in together. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. How do my cameras survive? No matter.
matter what vessel I make them in, I always end up making the exact perfect quantity. How magical is that? I added a little bit of maple syrup to make it extra fabulous, and that is such a gorgeous treat. I'm going to enjoy this while I crack on with this afternoon's emails. Okay, my darlings, I've just done a few hours of emails, and I feel very on top of my workload ahead of the weekend. I like to go into the weekend with an empty inbox. That is always the dream. We just had a delivery. Postman just arrived and has bought me my beauty pie order. So I thought I would share that with you because I've got a mixture of my all time favorites, the things that I use the most, my um, beauty pie empties restocked, as well as bits that I have been requested to add into my order from both my mother and from Charlie. So I thought I would share all of our favourites. Charlie's just got back home. We both just had our cars cleaned and after the rain of today they're both looking brown again which is great. Um, but yeah I'm sure he'll pop up in a second and tell you his beauty pie favourites. You can, you can have one membership and share it with your family if that works for you because as you may know beauty pie is a luxury beauty membership. So once you purchase your membership which is very affordable and I do have my 10 pound off discount code which is Josie sent me. Once you've got this membership you have access to basically industry prices on so many amazing beauty products. The founder realized, um, and by the way she is basically a superwoman, she founded Fitflop, Soba Dupa, Soap and Glory amongst other brands. Beauty Pride I think is the most genius of all. She basically realized that within the beauty industry the markups are astronomical. Like think about candles, serums, bath oils, like moisturizers, they are often like hundreds of times marked up and what the product is worth, cost price versus what we pay for it, all that fluff in the middle is shop space, retail space, marketing, brand, like if you buy a Chanel fragrance you are paying to smell of Chanel, you're not paying for those ingredients, you're paying for the brand behind it and you are paying a load <laughs> for that benefit of the branding. So if you are, not even if you're on a budget because like these products are insanely amazing and all of my friends love them no matter what their budget, but if you, even if you are on a budget, I feel like Beauty Pie is the one to go to for products that pack a punch but you're not paying for that fluff in the middle. So anyway, you guys know how Beauty Pie works, it's amazing, we all love it for very very good reason. So. My personal favourites, super active capsules, pure double vitamin C and vitamin E. Vitamin C is something that absolutely everyone should include in their morning skincare routine. Not only is it just a delight because it smells good and your skin is instantly brighter, but over the long term helps with the pigmentation of the skin, helps with brightness, and it's just something that we should all do. So the morning routine, get up, cleanse my face, I apply um, a hyaluronic, hyaluronic serum, then I apply my vitamin C and then I let that sit on my skin for a good 10 minutes to an hour to be honest while I make my coffee, have my um, morning stroll around the garden and then I do my, sometimes I do my second serum of the day and then sometimes I go straight in with, with my moisturizer then my SPF but yes, I feel like the basics in a good skincare routine, good cleansing, something hydrating like a hyaluronic acid, a vitamin C, moisturizer, SPF, then your day, <laughs> um, and then a really good cleanser to cleanse everything off, double cleanse, and then some kind of active before bed. That is just what, in my opinion, and most dermatologists' opinion, everyone needs to do. So, vitamin C capsules, the prices vary hugely from brand to brand, but the Beauty Pie ones, in my opinion, incredible value versus what you pay versus what you get, if you know what I mean. I've actually got three because I can't live without them. This is going in my cupboard to you straight away. This is going in my cupboard as backup. And these ones are a request from Lilla, especially when your skin is a little bit more mature. It's very important that we look after the tone and the texture and the brightness. So vitamin C is a must for everybody. Every single one of my Beauty Pie orders included, includes, my orders includes, my orders includes a super healthy skin. This is my favorite body moisturizer. It is so 
moisturizing <laughs> it really is it smells great it's very lightweight it sinks in super duper quickly it's got softening hibiscus flower oil droplets and nourishing shea butter it's just a sublimely gorgeous moisturizer and again very very good value for money i would compare this to that keels one what's it called creme de la something creme creme de corpse it's like that, basically. A lot of beauty pie products are literally the same as branded ones, but without the brand name, hence why you can get them so much cheaper, like the vitamin C capsules. Who else does capsules, I wonder, for three times the price? But yeah, great one. Okay, next, something which is actually new to me and new to beauty pie. <laughs> How many more can I hold in this hand? Super Luminous Skin Genius. So I do love a nice lightweight um, tint on my skin. My skincare routine and the facials and things that I've been doing at the moment mean my skin is in a pretty good place, so I don't need anything too heavy. A BB cream is normally perfect for me. This has got, let me read from the website, hyaluronic acid, so obviously great for hydration, dewy skin, collagen amino acids to support and maintain a healthy skin barrier, tripeptide 5 for smoothing and softening, blurring, priming, luminous skin finish, nourishing texture, mix with foundation, or use it on its own, vegan, clean beauty, fragrance free, contains recycled materials, amazing. So if you have a membership for Beauty Pie, you can get this for £20, and if you don't, the retail price is £50. So very worthwhile getting the membership. Um, I have got the shade Medium. So um, yeah, I'll be trying that out tomorrow morning. We can try it out together. And that was a whole lot of skincare benefits inside a makeup product, which I love. And I especially love that in a concealer because then you can pop it. I'm gonna use the lighter one under my eyes because then it's going to be working on my little fine lines and wrinkles under my eyeballs. So the member's price of this is 12 pounds, which is incredibly affordable. Um, and a lot of the ingredients in this are super hydrating and plumping, so great exactly what we want in that under eye area. So I have just used my finger to blend that in under the eyes. Super illuminating, oh, look who it is. Oh, finally, some light that actually <laughs> makes me look human. I always get stitched up in all the videos. Why? I don't know, the lighting in our kitchen's dreadful. It's a dark house, to be honest. Yeah, it's not the best lighting, this house, actually. It's no. probably one of the very few drawbacks. Yes. It's got many positives, though. Yes. Right, darling, um, I did order a few of your favorites in my beauty pie order. Epic. Would you like to talk about why you love your foot cream so much? Yeah. <clears throat> um, well, th this is definitely one of the best that mm -hmm. I've ever used. Mm -hmm. I use this almost every evening. Yeah. Um, it sounds mad, but I think it helps me sleep better. But also, because well, look, I'm on my feet a lot, obviously work out a lot, particularly as I'm getting back playing rugby. Yeah. And particularly in the summer months, I think maybe less now. Mm -hmm. But in the summer months where you're, you know, you're wearing sandals, or not sandals, like espadrilles or all sorts of different things. Mm -hmm. You've got something here, mate. Um, it's, it's important, I think, to have nice moisturised feet. You moisturise your hands, why wouldn't your feet? Yep. So, I um, think it is important in winter because you're wearing like your thick cashmere socks, you've got your wellies on. I mean, look, I use it every night. So yeah. it's literally part of my nighttime routine and I really mm. miss it when I, when I, and you don't need much of this. That's no. the other impressive thing. I'd probably say I get through one of these maybe every five, six weeks. That's a lot. I yeah, didn't realise it's got cactus enzymes, so it's actually like, it's actually a softening foot and heel cream. I mean, as I say, I never seem to get really, um, apart from the odd blister from my rubber boots, which is to be expected, mm. I don't get like, not it's to be grim, but I don't get like callous. So soft. Yeah, probably. Mm. Um, and then the other product that I absolutely love from Beautiful Things over here, isn't it? Is their bath oils. Yeah. Um, now, obviously, look, we're big fans of Bamford. We love their bath oils. Do you? I would say these are a serious dupe. Yeah. And well, they're a fraction of the price. I mean, ingredients-wise, <coughs> um, we'll have to look on the website. So this is... I'm, I'm actually going to look on the website and compare the ingredients. Which is this one. Let me smell it. I mean, that smells like a spa. It smells amazing. I think also, one thing that I like about this over similar products, not just Bamford, is it has like a cap on it, look, that lets you drip it out. A lot of these other like high end brand um, or like luxury high end brand oils mm. is there's no lit there's no thing like that so you Why end up getting through is, it mate? well it's clever isn't it mm -hmm. whereas beauty pie I'm more about consumer first yeah um so yeah this will last a long time so that contains lavender for grounding and relaxing that's why we like that one before bed roman chamomile for soothing and calming and holy to lift your spirits well it 
no, it's amazing. And as I say, it's quite my my go to would normally be in a normal week where I'm training quite a lot. Mm. It would be a, like a good sort of dash of this, mm -hmm. and then a sprinkling salt based style of uh, Epsom salts. Mm. And what I've realised recently, I'll have to. I can't show you because it's a massive a kilogram bag. But a um, I get sports massage fairly regularly, which once again back to investing in our health. Yeah. Um. So it's fifty five quid a week that mm -hmm. I spend on a sports massage, which is less than a round of drinks in London. And it honestly, yesterday she was massaging my legs, and she was like, "Do you know what? I've just realised, and we, I've been seeing Lisa in Chipping Norton. Shout out, go supple in Chipping Norton. Yeah. Um. I've been seeing her for two years, and she said, "Do you know what? I've just been thinking. Like, you never get any. I get very few knots or lumps or anything anywhere, but maybe." where you'd expect being sat down. Mm. She's like, she thinks that's because I'm having my muscles worked every mm. every week. But she said about Epsom salts, complete tangent, oh, don't mess around with like West Lab or any of these brands because they're not legit. And I did my research and they're not legit. Um, just, just go on an equine website and order order equine Epsom salts, which they use for horses. <laughs> and that's what I've got. There's, they don't smell of anything. So you put that. So in you well. put this in, mm. which makes it relaxing and soothing and lovely, and, and that gives that. Salt. And then the equine salts, which are cheaper, buy in bulk, better yeah. for the environment because of the packaging, and also way more. I think they're legit Epsom salts, wow. whereas I think West Lab and stuff don't. How do quote people me on this. bathe their horses? They have, honestly, the whole horse world, it was something we're not aware of. And um, they yeah. have huge like baths and stuff. I mean, like the technology that these horse races, mm -hmm. horse, these horse racing people put the horses through mm -hmm. and the, the treatment, this is, you know, that, you know, not a debate for now, but the horses get treated like royalty, like they have massages and wow. everything because they are so valuable, yeah. right? They're a valuable asset. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that's and what a are your tip. other favorite products from Future Pie? There is a, well, it's a, it's a reddish pinkish sandy color and it's a cream that I often like using at nighttime when we're on holiday or during the warmer months because it's like relieving and soothing. Is it the hyaluronic one? No. Oh. I want to say it's like CICA or something. Sika. Yeah, something okay. like that. Yeah. And then, oh look, these are my two go-to. Mm -hmm. And then the other product, or oh look, the hyaluronic acid is obviously brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's also, yep, there you go, um, which is something that everyone should use. Um, <laughs> I just love that. And you like the fruity zyme mask. That's it. Mm. Yeah, so it's like a sort of nibbly, peely. Yeah, it's like an acid mask without feeling too harsh and horrible. Yeah. Um, and it helps, I think, particularly with men. Mm -hmm. The thing with the acid masks, obviously, with women, it's anti aging, mm -hmm. right? It removes dead skin cells. With men, it massively helps, I think, pre shaving ah. because it removes build all the up. crap and yeah. build up. And after shaving, it can stop ingrowing hairs. I think. I don't, don't quite well. I don't know. That's the feeling I have. Mm. Um, so I've often used it sort of as part of that routine. So yes, I always get me on these videos when my skin's not looking as no, good. But that's because I've been training good. quite a lot. It looks good. It's that's going. the challenge, right? When you're gymming. Gymming and, you know, when I'm not gymming, yeah. I don't look as good or feel as healthy, but my skin looks better. Mm -hmm. um, but that's the uh, Catch-22. This says Beauty Pie plus Kathy Phillips. Who's Kathy Phillips? I think she's like a herbologist. Well, well done, Kathy. You've nailed the <laughs> recipe. Shout out to Kath, yeah. my good pal. Yeah. Um, maybe she's related to Zara Phillips? Doubt probably it. not. It's probably the most common surname aside from Smith. Um, <laughs> Williams? There you go. Jones. Yeah. Smith. Williams. Yeah, mm -hmm. there you go. Mostly Welsh. Um, anyway, we're going to go and explore, aren't we? We are. Just topped up my <clears throat> lipstick. Ooh. <laughs> Great chats with Charlie as always. I've just topped up my lipstick and I'm using the Beauty Pie. I always find these so hard to read. I'm gonna have to leave the colour linked down below. It's kind of like a corally brownie pink. Beautiful, super balmy, along with a lip liner, also Beauty Pie, Wonder Gel Longwear Lip Liner in the shade Vanilla Nude. Such a wearable colour combination. And the other makeup thing that I bought as a top up is the Super Brow Angled Shaping Brow Pencil. Looks like this. Fantastic for just filling in any little areas where you need. Um, some extra brow hair creating. And then on the other side, you've got a little spoolie. So very, very handy. Why spend triple the price on the um, super branded ones when the Beauty Pie ones are amazing? Uh, what else did I get? Oh, another serum concealer. 
and a sharpener because I can never find one when I need it. So there we go. That is my beauty pie order for today. We're going to now head down to the Witchford Pottery, which is a lovely pottery and kind of cafe near us where you can get plant pots <laughs> very exciting because we need to be doing our lasagnas our tulip bulb and general bulb lasagnas over the next couple of weeks nearly tulip planting season so we're going to get organized and maybe get some nice treats from the cafe and then it's time to make our toad in the hole which i'm very excited about super impressed with that concealer lovely gorgeous so yeah i'll leave my beauty pie favorites link down below as well as your 10 pound off the membership little code that you need and um you'll see me using these throughout the rest of the vlog as part of my skincare routine and makeup routine and i'm so excited to give this little bad boy a try tomorrow i think it could be a really good pre-workout when you just want a little bit of something on your face i love that it's skincare with makeup tinted hyaluronic complexion brightener gorgeous okay Let's go. I bought um, some lovely flowers from Dales for this morning, as you saw, and my lovely husband has also picked up a bunch of flowers for the house, for me, for the house, uh, from Soho Farmhouse. The florist there is really lovely. We've got some gorgeous bits in here, some alliums. I think this is called an antique rose, like the antique hydrangea, which is also featuring in here. Gorgeous. And viburnum. Don't know where they're getting that from, because that is definitely not in season but I absolutely love it so I'm just going to put these all together and then we're going to take the doggies for a nice little walk I think we're going to go somewhere different today normally obviously we just walk out the house um but <laughs> you deserve an extra special walk today my sweetest and I think we're going to take you to Broughton Castle how lovely is that my little radishi oh you're so smelly and I adore you had more of your smile what if the wind could spread your love okay so we have bought the very badly behaved boys we're kicking we've off been, we've been kicking off during that car journey we're not happy we bought them to Broughton Castle there are probably five different footpaths um, all leading out from this area. We're going to do a little lap around the actual castle. It's a really nice time of year because the leaves are starting to change on the trees. We haven't been here in ages. No, we haven't. We used to come here quite regularly. This, because this was in Wolf Hall is the famous thing that it's famous for, which is, I think, some BBC Tudor drama or something. I think it's also very haunted. Um, yeah. but yeah, last time I think we came was in the snow. So let's go and check it out. Birds will sing about your heart. Maybe the trees will whisper the word Maybe the sun will spread your joy to the ones who lost their hope So this is Broughton Castle. You can actually go in and explore the castle and the gardens. Yeah, we should do that one day. Yeah, my mum and dad. Yeah, I'd love that. we always said we do it with my granddad, because you did bring him here that way. Yeah. This is a proper moat, isn't it? Proper moat. Yeah, they've got a lovely walled garden. I think someone actually still lives there. Well, yeah, it's a family still. Mm. They still live there, for sure. Gorgeous, but half the house is closed to visitors. Oh, look, our sleeping friend has arisen. Oh. Hello, sweet little baby. I didn't realise there'd be so many calves at this time of year, actually. But cows do give birth all time, all time, all round. Do you know what? That's what I was thinking about sheep. Like, do they only mate at a certain time of year? No, I think this is what we were saying, right? So someone told us. Have we said this on the Yeah, YouTube about already? Easter lamb is about not a thing. About complete nonsense. Which yeah. actually is real. I feel really betrayed. Yeah. Um, which is also why, actually, retrospectively, why Dan at Quinton Clover was like, lamb at your wedding would be great in June. Because mm. that's when British lamb really is available. Yeah, but um, that's my question. So, like, yeah, let's walk and talk because the dogs no, are getting annoyed. I think it's more dictated by the farmers. Uh, when they introduce rams to the field right i believe i could be wrong and i'd mm. imagine that's the same with cows if I you had a bull see. in a field i think they'd be having little ones all time all the time you're but really that's, cute really fresh. just careful bring dex sticky a bit further away you're very cute Pickens, baby come here please well done for being a good boy you're very cute the thing i love about estates like this is the ancient trees just so what type of tree is that darling is that a giant maple that's obviously an oak over there. The one that's turning golden, what color, What kind of tree is that? What kind of trees are these? Uh, good point, and I'm not entirely sure. 
My guess would be sycamore. I think don't they're know. sycamore trees. Really? Oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm not that good with, with trees these days. I feel like... I don't know, I'd have to go up to them and look at the leaves, but I don't particularly want to do that with all the sheep and the dogs. If that's an oak... Well, I'm pretty sure this is an oak tree. Slightly different variety to a lot of oak. I think when you look at it, it does look like a sycamore. Think about the one in sycamore. Mm. Charlie and I like to use our walks as um No, you got to do it a bit longer. <laughs> well, Charlie and I like to air our frustrations whether it's work or personal or whatever during our walks. I just said to him the best way to calm the nervous system is tree hugging. I think it's also important sometimes by the way because I think everyone thinks oh we do occasionally get people saying, oh, you've got such a perfect life. It's, look, we have a wonderful Everyone life. has stresses. But this week's been quite a stressful week. And actually, you probably wouldn't know from the other vlogs, but we've had a pretty hectic week. You know, obviously, there's a lot going on in the world, but also, you know, a lot of people are, are, owe us money that haven't paid us. <laughs> we've been chasing and been worrying that some of these contracts that we've that we've not been paid for might not be paid. No. Nah. Uh, because of the company situations, so that is stressful. Mm -hmm. so we obviously have employees that we pay, so other people that rely on our business. And then... Um, We've had quite an emotionally stressing week, stressful week with family stuff, haven't we? But I think yeah. it's just important we share this. I'm not going to go into it, but the way we deal with that is trying to get out. People only see 10% maximum on the vlogs. Exactly. Anyway, let's so. do some tree hugging. Is that working for you? Yeah, so the reason why tree hugging <laughs> is really good for you. I can't work out if you're serious. I'm deadly serious. Okay. Tree hugging connects you with nature. Like, think about the roots of this tree. Are all deeply like down in the earth and it's connecting you to the earth which is negatively charged yeah and it helps to bring down your um water levels i mean look each to their own i just like walking and looking at beautiful views that to me connects me with nature can i do this no i'm i'm, an, I'm, I'm all right thanks it's, it's the, honestly this tree's not really my type <laughs> dickens is enjoying it though um but no look each to their own i mean i think it's important whatever I think we all need that method of switching off. I often think, you know, um, I was chatting to someone recently, today, sorry, about it. He was like, oh, you know, you need to meditate, mate. And I was like, do you know what? That. Yeah, and I was like, I don't need to meditate. Do you know what? I just need to keep, whenever I'm too worked up, I need to take myself to that happy place, which is on the beach in the Maldives. <laughs> and just picture that and just think, one day we'll get back there and, and everything will be fine. And, um, but yeah, reconnecting with nature. And actually, credit, uh, credit to you for suggesting this because it's not the nicest of afternoons, but it's a great way to end the week. Snid Dex, I'm a little bit stressed because there's so many animals and so many smells going on. There's some mushrooms here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're <not> cold. <laughs> Fluffy bottoms. Here we go. According to Google, hugging a tree releases oxytocin known as the hormone of love and trust, which gives you that warm, fuzzy feeling. Perfect. It has also been scientifically proven that hugging a sausage dog has the exact same effect. So many little things to discover on the ground at this time of year. Look at that bit of lichen. Wow. sausages I would have just shoved them straight in the oven but Charlie of course has a jazzy way of cooking so sausages. So you prick them, you're a prick. <laughs> um, people that watch our channel know that we like those tricks. Um, yeah you want to obviously pierce the skin. These are like, these are proper poor sausages by the way. These are from Paddock Farm, which is really near us and it's, they are unreal. So this is Tamworth pork, it's all pasture fed. Although actually, sorry, the pork isn't pasture fed, all their beef is pasture fed. I don't think you can have pasture fed 
uh, pigs. But, don't know, not sure. Anyway, ramble off, um, and then I just give them a quick brush in olive oil. It will stop them sticking to the pan, um, but they'll cook in their own juices and fat, and they should crisp up. Yummy! Friday night when we had uh, my mum and her lovely friend Covetta over for dinner. Charlie did bangers and mash, not toad in the hole, which I was initially very, very sad about and tried everything in my power to persuade him to do the toad in the hole. But once Charlie has got a recipe in his head, there is no changing that boy's mind. <laughs> anyway, I will make up for it and uh, make a toad in the hole at some point. Um, but yes, it was a really lovely evening. I'm doing a bit of a sandwich vlog, so what we got up to yesterday will have been the end of the last vlog that you saw, because I try and make sure that each vlog has got like enough sustenance to it, and I knew that the last vlog, so the vlog that you'll have seen on Thursday, was already quite big, and I knew I wasn't going to film much yesterday. It all makes sense in my head. Don't do it very often, but yeah, it's a bit weird. Sorry, Chloe, who has to edit my mad higgledy piggledy vlogs. But, um, what was I going to say? Ah, yes, so I just did a full face of Beauty Pie. Full face except for mascara. I used my Merit Beauty Clean Lash Mascara. I love that one and I love the Vive one right now. I don't know if I've tried a Beauty Pie mascara, actually. Never really had the need to because I get through them so slowly. Yeah, maybe I will add one next time. Anyway, so I started off, obviously, my skincare routine as usual this morning. I did use, yay! Super vitamin, vitamin, super, super active capsule, pure double vitamin C and vitamin E. Wow, that was a tongue twister. Oh, let me tell you about this. So I have been mixing in my Beauty Pie, where are they? Awesome bronze drops, which are basically tan that you mix in with your serum, in with the Lumine Nordic Sea Triple Glow Radiance Elixir. I was using my tanning drops with my Elemis Rose serum but I ran out of that and then I went to the Lumine event last week and got this. This is lovely, I think it is additional vitamin C, I'm sure you can't overdose on vitamin C on your skin but just I'll pop a picture of the tanning drops on the screen here. Where are they? But they're fabulous and I just pop a few drops of those in with your lightest serum and it just keeps your skin glowing and tanned throughout um, the cold months especially. Yay, the sun is coming! And that's a really, really nice product. Highly rate that. And then, moisturiser today. I used L'Occitane Divine Cream. My skin loves this. And my SPF for today was my Evelon Factor 50, which is nearly finished. I have got another one ready to go. Okay, then... Tinted Hyaluronic Complexion Brightener, Shake Well Before Use from Beauty Pie. This is definitely going in my gym bag, and I'm going to order another one <laughs> for my main makeup area here. As you can see, my skin is 
glowing right now and um, this is I would say the lightest like you know I'm sure lots of you have got this because I bang on about it all the time the Arborian I'm very much a light base kind of gal and this is probably half as light as this for a BB cream this has actually got a pretty substantial amount of coverage and I do like it if my well obviously I love it if my skin is in a very good place, then this is most definitely enough. Or for those like working from home days where you just want to have a little sum sum on your skin, then I think this is perfection. I love that it's got skincare in it, as does the Aborium BB to be fair. Yeah, love. It's literally called Super Luminous. And that is what my skin is. I love it. So, big fan. New launch big fan of this. Then I used from the same collection Super Luminous Serum Concealer. It also has skincare in it so fantastic for those under eye areas where you just want to not get wrinkles and look after the skin in that very sensitive area. I'm going to put both of these in my gym bag. I wanted to do a full face of beauty price so I got this out of my gym bag. Bearing in mind I go to the gym at least three mornings a week so I do my makeup at the gym three mornings a week so I'm not like demoting the products by putting them in the gym bag. It just means that they're the products that I know are going to be quick, glowy, easy and regularly used. So the Beauty Pie Awesome Bronzed Bronzing Cream which by the way is a mega dupe for the Chanel Le Beige. I can't tell the difference when I use them, but this is a lot more expensive. So that little trio for a gorgeous glowing base is going in my gym bag. On my brows, I'm super happy with how my brows look today. The colour is really natural, they're nice and fluffy. Super brow angled shaping brow pencil in the shade Perfect Brown from Beauty Pie. Big fan of that. And then I used the Beauty Pie Archaeology Sculpting Gel. You can really fluff up your brows with that. Um, and then the lips also look great. This is the lip liner Wonder Gel in the shade Vanilla Nude. Love it. And it's so soft. It feels really gentle on the lips. No pulling whatsoever. Even Charlotte Tilbury lip liner can be a wee bit scratchy. In fact, I'm going to put that in my handbag. I sharpened it with the Beauty Pie Sharpener, very handy. And what else did I use? The lipstick, and I don't know the colour of this one. It doesn't tell ya. It says 002A on the bottom, but I'm sure I'll be able to find the colour and leave it on the screen here. They are so balmy. Mm. Just the most comfortable, gorgeous lipsticks in the world. So that is my face for today. Okay, so plan of action on this glorious Sunday. I think the weather's just going to get brighter and brighter as the day goes on. We've just had a bowl of yoghurt each. Sorry, very tickly schnezzle. Um, we've just had a bowl of yoghurt each with some seed mix. Got my fleece on and Charlie has got a very long to-do list for today. Greenhouse tidying, basically completely finishing prepping it for winter. As I said, I've been doing it little by little, but today is like the last day because I think the weather really is going to be very wintry after today. I do need to do a bit more deadheading and clipping and stuff down in the bottom of the garden. The garden furniture that we had out all summer needs to go away, which means that we need to clear out the shed, which is my least favourite job. Um, we need to turn off the, or remove the irrigation from the flower borders because you don't want cold wet flowers over autumn winter. Um, and then we've got some log organising to do. It's all very glamorous, um, but nice outdoor Sunday tasks. So. First stop is the greenhouse. progress update sun is shining spot dexy and it's actually quite warm this here this is the contents of my greenhouse probably a lot of spiders hidden amongst all of this 
but you've just seen we've been emptying out all of the pots. I've been saving a lot of the spent soil and the drainage bits from the bottom of the pots in here and we'll use this for the bottom of our bulb lasagnas, isn't that right Dexy? It's really useful to keep bits of broken pot because you can put them in the bottom of pots covering the holes. You can see most pots have got holes in the bottom and that just stops soil and compost oops, from coagulating, great word, and um, your plant's roots rotting, so great for drainage. Over here are the bits that I need to water and some of my bulbs. We're going to prune back the hydrangea, plant up the beautiful hellebore that Lilla's friend Kavata bought for us for dinner. We've got a few seedy bits, plant labels and everything, just really needs a big tidy and I'm probably going to clean my pot collection. Autumn greenhouse cleaner, isn't it? The big pre-winter greenhouse clean. Mr. Bumblebee's gonna get closer to the door. Hopefully he's gonna see himself out oh, shortly. So it's still 16 degrees in here. 16 degrees. So the greenhouse is pretty much empty. Um, should we jet wash it, darling? No, I think let's just sweep it. With really a wire brush. And I think it'll be fine. Yeah, okay. So yeah, it's all clean, it's all, well it's not clean, it's all empty. So we're gonna do a bit of a clean so that it's nice and tidy ready for winter. You're guarding the front door, my chicken nugget and falele. You're doing a very good job. No one would dare enter the house when such a scary looking doggy is protecting the kitchen. <laughs> hours later and it's an amazing job that we have got done so the greenhouse is now cleaned and tidied ready for winter we took away everything that was inside here and gave everywhere a real cleaning down I even cleaned the plant pots so the terracotta pots should be not sparkling clean because nobody likes a sparkling clean terracotta pot but much better than they were before this little area here is my kind of to-do list area so we were originally going to plant these around the tree bases, but actually they work better indoors. So I found this pot here, perfect for a bulb lasagna. These are kind of like white, what do I call it? It's daffodils. Um, really nice for just having a bit of greenery and a bit of bloom throughout the dreary winter months. Tidied the shelves up here. Yeah, it's all looking so much better, so much more organised. And it's 18 degrees in here, which is delightful. So yes very productive Sunday afternoon. I'm gonna make myself a matcha and then it's on to the next job. does feel like Blue Peter, but um, here are the three stages of making a bulb lasagna. This is the perfect time of year to do it. You can buy bags like this with bulbs in in most garden centers, everything from Narcissus to Crocus. Um, there's little things that I always forget the name of them. Um, oh, can't remember the name, pop it on the screen here. Right through to things like Anemones and Ranunculus, but they are more for their own pots than bulb lasagnas. So anyway, focusing on bulb lasagnas, 
bowl, fairly flat, not too deep because that would just be a waste of soil. Does help if they have holes in the bottom, but the fact that I bought these from Burford Garden Company as bulbous annual bowls makes me think it's not that crucial. A little bit of soil in the bottom, about an inch of soil. Then place your bulbs in, pack them in as close as you can get. You can see mine are ready to go. These are just in the bag, so that's amazing that there's so much energy in this bulb that it can actually start to shoot without any light or even soil or water. That is amazing. And then, cut. oh yeah, so as many as you can without them touching. And then cover with soil, water, just with um, a fine rose and label your lasagnas. Easy as that. productive afternoon. I am so happy with what we've got done in the greenhouse. It looks really lovely over here with my little, of course they're not bulb lasagnas because it's only one layer, my bulb planting and yeah it just feels so much tidier and I've got my little station over here which is now my to-do list tray. These are the anemones and ranunculus but they need soaking so I'll do that on the next sunny day, soak them for a few hours before planting. And I've got a couple of lovely little bowls over here. This one will be great for anemones and ranunculus. And there was another one. There we go, that one with the scalloped top up there. I think that'll be gorgeous to have some anemones growing out of it, but that's the job for another day. Charlie and I are going to do a quick whiz around the shed. That is my least favorite job, shed tidying. I think Charlie should just do that. Maybe I'll leave him to it. And then we are gonna make a roast chicken for dinner. Yummy! I think one of my favourite smells in the world is the smell of a Sunday roast coming together. It is a very promising fragrance filling the house. Now Charlie and I are doing the most Cotswoldy Sunday chore of all time. We are organising our barbers <laughs> because we have got far too many. We keep most of them, we did keep most of them here in the dog's bedroom. I have selected, you'll be unsurprised to hear, my oldest. Lala's barber, which is actually older than I am, which is this one. This was my first ever barber and still my favourite. I've also on this hook got my Holland Cooper field jacket. This is the one with the built-in gilet and it is so warm and amazing for those horrible blusterous days when you just want to be super snuggly. This peg is for the dogs. It's got their tweed coats and their leads. And then I've got my Holland Cooper country um, fleece here, which is my most grabbed for gardening. Some of Charlie's barbers over here we need to organise. I think this is Charlie's. I don't ever remember having a big fur lined one, but then we did do a few projects with Barber a couple of years ago, so we might have acquired some extras. But any which are surplus to requirement in this house, we're going to save for Straw Top too, because guests at Straw Top do get to um, borrow a Barber while they stay. I think this one's also going to end up at Straw Top. But these are the best Barbers that you can get, the gold standard ones, so we are spoiling our guests. Now this is actually Burberry, but this is Barber. And this was hiding behind our kitchen door. These are more spring coats, so I think I'm just going to give them a wash and then pack them away for spring, because we just, there's only so many barbers that one can have out on display. But no, that's not all of them. Ah, I did pile these nicely on the chair, but they's, they've obviously slipped down. Okay, um, excuse my attire, by the way. <laughs> this is literally like the scruffiest Sunday, but I have to say, Amazon leggings, I've got a tissue stuffed in them, an old <laughs> Reese t-shirt. I'm sorry, this is very scruffy. Okay, what do we have here? Barber, UK size eight. I think this is definitely a good contender for a straw top one. Ooh, something in the sleeve, probably a spider. Um, yeah, this is a really nice, suddenly it's raining. I should probably take the dog poo bags out of the jackets that are going to go to straw top, shouldn't I? Probably have an entire collection of dog poo bags here. So yeah, this is a nice 
lightweight barber. Um, we'll keep obviously a few in the house for our friends and family that come and visit us because whenever friends and family come over, we always take them on the dog walk and we always recommend that people wear a barber. Um, honestly, I did not know we had this many. It's actually a bit ridiculous. This one is a size small. It's got a really nice tweed lining. Um, is that tweed or just kind of checker? I think this might be Charlie's size small um, because they do come up quite big. No, this would not fit Charlie. This one again, I think will be a good one for straw top. So, oh, no dog poo bags in this one. Hi, Dexy. Quite an oversized fit but you've got the nice classic barber cord collar. Okay, great, that's a good one for straw top. Although they're kind of the same size, so no, I'll leave this one here for our house guests um, because we need a men's for straw top too. This one, I do remember getting, it's a UK size eight lightweight. This one I got from Netta Porter um, because I worked with Netta Porter a few years ago and um, I think it was during lockdown and no one was really buying like designer stuff and I noticed that they had barber and I thought that would be a great thing to introduce my audience to. So poo bag check, nope, none in there. This is a really nice one and I know that a lot of guests choose this one when they come and stay with us. So this one is gonna stay here. We've got a secret cupboard in here. So um, I think I'll hang them up in there. Hello my Dexy, oh I understand. You've seen mummy playing with barbers and you think that means that we're going on a walk, but I'm sorry you are mistaken, my sweet. This one I'm pretty sure is Charlie's. Wow, size medium. This is really nice because it's quite padded. This is lovely. Hoo hoo hoo. Lovely jubbly. They don't, they don't say if they're men's or women's. Um, yeah, this is definitely men's. That is a nice one. In fact, I think this might be Charlie's regular one, so I'm just gonna check with him. Okay, yeah, that one is Charlie's. Uh, and then this is not a barber. This is a chauffeur field coat. But to be honest, I've not reached for this ever since I had my um, Holland Cooper field jacket and dog poo bags. So I think, I mean, obviously I'm not gonna get rid of this because it's such a nice coat and it was very expensive, but I didn't really wear it, so. That will go in the cupboard for our guests. Okay, so two Holland Cooper little flat caps. I'm um, not sure where to keep those. We need to have like a country walk accessories cupboard, don't we? So yeah, right, now I'm gonna attack this cupboard. Such a productive Sunday. Right, the try on continues. So this is an incredibly useful jacket from Holland Cooper. It's, um, it's got the little sleeve wrist warmers, which is great. This is fantastic for really rainy day dog walks. Um, you've got the zip, you've got a lining, you can actually cinch it in around the waist. You've got nice deep pockets and um, a really lovely fluffy collar. Can you see that? It's gorgeous, just realized. This vlog is gonna be so long. We didn't need a barber try on in this vlog, but here we are. Um, yeah, fantastic for blusterous dog walks. So we'll definitely be keeping this one in the cupboard. Another barber. This is definitely a men's, I think. Um, so I'm gonna pop that in the pile for Charlie to decide. <laughs> the coat sorting clip that nobody asked for. This is my coat that I, I, I have got far too many coats. <laughs> this is the one that I reach for when it's so cold and maybe really wet and horrible and it's literally like a duvet. It's from, sorry, I don't know why I wore this bra with such a floppy t-shirt today. I just grabbed Sunday items. Um, it's from Michael Kors and it's literally a duvet. It's a hug. It's so warm and comfy. You can actually wear it the other way around as well if you want to be fluffy on the outside but why would you ever not want the fluff on your body? But it does look quite nice, you know, you've got the pockets on this side too. But yeah, I always want the fluff on my body. So this is a fantastic one. Definitely keeping that in the cupboard. And during the horrible, horrible months of winter, that one comes out. Private White VC, made in England. That's one of Charlie's to organize. 
Now, this is funny. So this is my Barber X Chloe coat. And it is surprisingly, or maybe unsurprisingly, my least worn barber, which is ridiculous because it was, of course, my most expensive one. So it is, I don't know why that camera angle is so weird, but it's got these fabulous ruffles on it, but I don't know if I ever really want ruffles when I'm um, <laughs> going for my dog walk. It feels a bit ridiculous. I think I'm gonna have to sell it because it, or do I just keep it for the memories? I mean, it's not hurting, is it? It does look ridiculous. I do regret buying this and I think I knew that I would, but is there anything more me than a Chloe barber coat? No, so I'll keep it for prosperity and it never hurts. Someone will come and stay with us and appreciate that. I can't believe how many barbers we've got. This is ridiculous. Is this a barber? It's like an emerald green. Um, I think that must be one of Charlie's. I don't know if that's a barber or not, but we'll let Charlie decide on that one. What's this? Lavenum. That's definitely Charlie's. Ah, that's funny. Or is it? Is this my one and only padded Holman Cooper gilet, or have I somehow managed to acquire two? I don't know, that's very strange. But I love that gilet, so that needs to stay very accessible. This is a Jules jacket. And it's really nice. It's quite fitted. I think I got this on Amazon. But do I need it? Because I... Oh, loads of tissues and a face mask. That's how old this is. Oh, how funny. Sign of the times. Yeah, I don't think I need this because I've got so many others. And i um, pretty sure I've got a Holland Cooper exactly like this. So that one is going to go. Um, I don't know if this is Barbara or not. I think it might be. Bright orange. I think that's a men's. And this is a bell staff. So that's Charlie's. Oh, okay. <laughs> that is the contents of our kind of guest cupboard. I'm going to put the giant deepest, darkest winter coats and the Chloe Barber back in there. And the Chauffeur field coat. And the Holland Cooper gilet. A bit of the house we never show you. This is the messy area. Around this corner, I'm not going to show you. That's where all our post arrives and it is such a mess. But this is the cupboard in question, kind of hidden away in the panelling. On the door, we keep tote bags, um, reusable shopping bags, a bag full of umbrellas. We also keep the Dyson, some little <laughs> steps, the ironing board, um, the bag full of carrier bags. I feel like everyone has got a carrier bag bag and our clothes errors. And then we've got this sturdy rail that we put up I remember putting this up during lockdown um, and then all the coats there. I've popped the Holland Cooper little flat caps up there as well. And there we go. That feels like quite a good job done. I cannot believe how scruffy I have been in today's vlog, um, but <laughs> I feel like adding this knit has somewhat Maybe not smart enough the look, but made it a little bit better than just my t-shirt earlier. So this is a really nice long knit from a company called Really Wild Clothing. And it's just the perfect green cable knit. It's fantastic for these kinds of days. Afternoons in the garden, dog walks, everything. And um, yeah, I'm literally one giant olive blob with my Amazon leggings on. So we are going to tackle the shed while the roast cooks and then... A relaxed evening, which I feel like we deserve because it's been a busy day, but a gorgeous day. Look at this view. My favourite view in the world. So peaceful. Well, it's five o'clock. The uh, church bells are about to chime and we have just finished doing the shed. So the wicker chairs from the bottom of the garden have been taken in and the cushions from this little area. I've swept up the leaves and it's a gorgeous evening i love it when the sun is low coming through the trees like this beautiful herbaceous board is looking good we're both feeling the grasses are doing well though. grasses look great they kind of go a little bit ambery at the How top strange right that one mm. look at that and then look at these two and they're planted at the same time Pathetic. same size strange right crazy an enemy is still looking glorious honorine is this um something beginning with p don't know. So that is epimedium. Epimedium. It's got a P sound in it. And the garden is starting to look very, very autumnal. 
and it won't be long until everything starts to die back for winter but it's so lovely at this time of year when the summer structure is still there the deeper colours remain like the chocolate cosmos structures of the eubles the pelagoniums the anemone, the grasses, the skimmias and the greenhouse. I'm so, so happy with how tidy it is in there. I just did a fine little sweep around. Can you tell I'm proud of this tidy space? <laughs> now I've just put the footage for today and yesterday into my laptop and it's over three hours worth of footage we need to edit so my guess is that this is just going to be a mega vlog so I will show you a few little clips there's the 5 p.m. bells need for my Sunday video live I will show you a few clips of um our Sunday roast and then I think we're just going to crash so my darlings thank you so much so much <laughs> for watching this mega vlog I really appreciate if you got to the end if you did get to the end, just have a little look and check if you are subscribed because it would mean the world to me if you do hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you got to the end, let's leave the word glimmer because the sun is glimmering through the trees right now. Leave the word glimmer in your um, comment down below so I can see who the most wonderful of you are if it got through to the end. And darlings, that's all from me. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Good night. <laughs>